Hey everybody, welcome to this episode where we're going to talk about errors when it comes to web requests. In the previous video we talked about 404, so you definitely want to check that out because this is going to be very similar. You see there's actually tons of different types of errors that could happen. 404 is actually one of them. So that's a status code. There are other status codes, 500 being another common one. And then there's a whole list of other ones that you can check for. So here is a summary of the HTTP status codes. They are in ranges, so 100s, 200s, 300s, 400s, and 500s. 400s being client error responses and 500s being server error responses. These are the two that you need to worry about in this video. So ours was a 404 in the previous video, and you can see that's here, but there are also others such as unauthorized, bad requests, method not allowed, and a bunch of others. It's up to the server to return the appropriate response. So you can think of it as you make a request to the server, the server's like, no bro, you're unauthorized, I'm gonna give you a 401, don't let it happen again. In that situation, there is something wrong with the client, us, we're the client in this situation, we are not authorized, so we need to get authorized by logging in. Or another example would be method not allowed, we're using the wrong HTTP method. Those are client errors, the next are server errors, when you make a request to the server and it's like, eh, eh, error, cannot compute. In that situation, you're gonna get a 500 message. The most common one you're gonna see is probably just 500, which is a general error, but you may see some of these other ones as well. So these are going to be checked inside of our fetch as well, you can just create more if statements or else ifs. So else if response dot status is, uh, let's go with 401, then you may redirect to, let's say, slash login. Else if response dot status is 500, then you might just do the same thing how we did set not found here. You could say set server error to true. These are some of the ways you can handle these different responses. The absolute best way to test this is with a website. There's probably a lot of them out there. Here is an example of one where we can make a request to this page with the error code we want to receive back to check that our response is appropriate. Or if you're working with a backend you are coding and you can control, then you could do that yourself. But let's go ahead and just try this out. I'm gonna copy this URL and let's go ahead and create a URL variable and I'm gonna paste that here. And then I'm going to make another URL variable and I'm gonna take this here, cut it and paste it here. So now what we can do is I can comment one of these out and just pass in URL here. And let's go ahead and try 404. And we will console log response.status. And obviously we're going to need to get rid of any variables we don't actually have defined. So I was just using that as an example. And yeah, we'll go from there. So let's try it on our site. So 404 seems to be working pretty much the same way as it was. But now let's try and change this to a different error, such as 401. When we save, we can see it redirected us to login. So that appears to be working. Let's go ahead and try this with a 500 as well. We're not doing anything with setting an error, but we should still see the response status in the console as 500. So everything appears to be working. And let's just try it out if we put some bogus URL here just for a second. When we run this, and we'll just do a refresh to get a fresh view here. We get some other errors here, but we don't get a status code. So what we can do is instead of making a section for every single possible status, we can make a catch all if something else goes wrong. So to do this, we can check if response dot okay. And not only that, but we want to invert this. So if the response is not okay, what are we gonna do? And now in here, we can say set error and put true which we can create the state for this. So let's go up here and we'll say const error and set error use state and we will default this to false. So if the response is not okay, we will set the error and what you'll typically see is throw new error and you can put a message in here like something went wrong. 
This can then be caught down below this then, so we'll say dot catch. Similar to then, this will have a function, which we can then console log and put in the error message. So we can say e dot message here, and then we can do anything else such as retry or do some logging, whatever we want to do. And if we just get something completely off, you know, if we just put some bogus URL, it'll just jump down here and give us the message. So right now we get failed to fetch. And if we went ahead and let's say, instead of this bogus URL here, we used this URL and got a different status code such as 501. Now we will get in the console, something went wrong, which is basically a way to say that, hey, we noticed something went wrong, but we don't have a case for that situation. So we just have a general error saying something went wrong. And what we can do is show something on the page. So scrolling down after if not found, we will repeat this similar thing. In fact, we could probably copy paste this. And now what we can do is if error is true, we will return instead of not found, let's return a paragraph saying something like something went wrong. Try again. Now our page should say something went wrong. Try again. At this point, I'm just going to go back to the original URL and confirm that our page is in fact working. And now what we can do is we can just remove this console log for the status. And as you develop, you can add any sections for different status codes you might encounter. For the 500, you might do something similar. So you might just say set error to true. And if we did end up getting a 500, we will get that similar response, something went wrong, try again. But you could handle it a little bit uniquely depending on if you needed to or not. So you only need to create the sections for status codes you want to handle in a unique way. All right enough talking let's go back to how we had it it seems to be working so at this point we can move on to the next video that is the basics of dealing with errors and status codes inside of fetch basically this is a lot of stuff because there can be a lot of different error codes so what you need to do is you need to look at whatever API you're consuming most likely if you're building an application you will be building the back end or someone you know will be building the back end and you can see exactly what status code options there are that could be returned and then you can make a matching section of code on the front end to deal with each one of those individually pretty early in this series so we haven't quite gotten that far where we have a back end and authorization and all of that but hopefully we can get to that soon and i have a lot of other resources out there for back-end development if you want to get some more experience but for now i recommend you just stay tuned in this series because we're going to continue learning and once you start working with your own back-end having these skills are going to come in really handy hopefully that was helpful thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one peace out